Sorry, Thunderdome Boxing Talk here. All right. Uh, man, my man Raphael Calvo sent me a video today. Uh, shout out, Raphael. Um, I should have never watched it. Um, nothing against Raph, but it's, it's Mayweather Sr. on there basically justifying why Berto is a, a justifiable pick, I guess, you know, pick. Um, why it's a legit fight, you know, a, a good fight. And he does it by slandering greats again. It's like this whole, you know, it's like now I, I'm starting to see maybe, you know, we all know how Mayweather, you know, slanders greats to make himself uh, better. You know, if I put these guys down, uh, I'll look bigger and better, right? Maybe that's what Senior did at home since his career, you know, never took off, wasn't that good. Uh, maybe he used to slander other names and justify shit to, to Junior. And, you know, <clears throat> maybe that's why Mayweather sees nothing wrong with, you know, shitting uh, on all-time greats. I mean, maybe. That's just a theory. I'm not saying that's why. I'm just saying it's a theory. Maybe. Um, you know, first off, he starts off on, um, saying anyone out there that could fight, uh, Mayweather beat they ass, and then someone chimes in, easy! <laughs> like, he never beat anybody's ass since, uh, Gaddy? I, I mean, come on, you know, no one's ever gotten their ass whooped since, what, about Gaddy? And that was after, you know, come on, he had already, he was about to retire, hired McGirt to extend his career, then had the three wars with Mickey Ward, then Floyd fights him. Okay, yeah, hard, hard fight to beat his ass. I mean, you know, uh, Gomez beat his ass uh, after that. You know, it's he was a shop-worn, you know, shot fighter, man. It was time to hang him up. You know. He doesn't beat anybody's ass. He outpoints them. Alright? Uh, first of all. You know, but then he... And this must be in Senior's mind. Because no one said the word bum. He just goes, you know, anyone out there that could fight, blah, 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 you beat their ass. And then he goes, and bum, you want to talk about uh, bums, fighting bums. Marciano, go, he fought nothing but bums. Go look up his record, and you won't see one name that ever did or, or ever stood out in boxing. And he goes, he goes, except Joe Lewis, uh, but he was old, and that's the truth, right? Joe Lewis was way past his prime, way old. Um, and Marciano did beat most of his, you know, best wins were against the all time greats who were past their prime. But, you know, to only point out Joe Lewis, I mean, look, hold on, let me bring this record up real quick. Uh, all right, all right, all right. Here, let me scroll, scroll down real quick. All right, I'm going to start with, um, I'm going to start with 1950. This is when, this is when he was, you know, out of, um, fighting, like, you know, club fights, and actually getting up into contendership, and, you know, the contenders. Uh, 1950. His his first fight in 1950 is against unde an undefeated Roland Lestarza. Alright. Oh, and he also says, um, I can't remember uh, what I was going to say right there. Alright, but his first fight is against an undefeated Roland Lestarza. Now, all right, hold on. Roland Lestarza was a top contender, good fighter. All right, um, when you hear Floyd say, "I want to fight a solid competitor," well, Lestarza was much more than a solid competitor. All right, and Mar him and Marciano had a tough, tough, close fight. Uh, Marciano put him down in their first fight, but they fought again. You know, but. 
uh, put him down in their first fight, but it, it was a good fight. You know, that's why they ended up rematching, because the first one was so close. The stars that actually was given Rocky the business in round one. Uh, but, you know, let, let's let's keep going here. Hold on, let me close that out. Um, all right, then he fights. He fights. He fights six times in 1950 alone. Six times. All right, he opened it up with La Starza. And you got to remember, back then, this is 1950, all right? Back then, what the Ring Magazine would do was put out their rankings every year. Um, like, you know, like, like 1941, the new rankings would come out, boom. And you know, the fighters would all want to see where they're ranked. Um, so if you got a good fight, like, against La Starza, who would have been in that Ring Magazine, uh, you know, top ten, uh, for, you know, the year 49 or 50, whatever it would have been, 1950. He would have been a ranked heavyweight. So Marciano, uh, all, all the fighters wanted to beat somebody, you know. Everyone trying, vying for a championship would want to beat somebody on that uh, Ring Magazine top 10 list. You want to have uh, one or two of those guys on your resume so when the when they do the rankings next time, you know, um, you'll be you know you have a better shot at being either in the rankings or you know the top dog uh, number one contender. Now yeah, throughout the year you know everyone knew who beat who uh, from the newspapers and the managers talking and fans talking. So you know you didn't have to wait a year or anything like that to get a title fight. Um, but when you're a new contender like Marciano was at this time, um, you know, you would fight one or two of these guys on that list. Um, try to, anyway. Um, a lot of fighters would be pushed out uh, and not allowed. But, you know, Marciano got it. And he would, you know, fought the stars. Beat him. Uh, split decision. But he got the W. All right. So that would bump him up. So, but the reason he would, they would have, you know, another five fights and against guys who have, who are solid competitors, you know, they're not, you know, more than that. They're just that. They're, they're stay busy fights. They're getting more, you know, wins on your record, more experience. Um, you know, you would fight them kind of fights for all those reasons. You wouldn't just want to fight one fight a year because if you fight one name and then nothing else, uh, you know, it, it might not. It wouldn't do as good as if you fought one name and four or five other guys. I mean, you know, there was other fighters now, like especially in the 40s, it happened a lot. They'd fight like three big names and then, you know, maybe 15 other fighters. All right. Through just one year, through like 1942 or something. Um, but anyway, all right. He goes through that, that. He fights, uh, what I say? He fought on La Starza to open the year up. He fights Eldridge Eatman, uh, Gino Bonavino, um, Johnny Score, uh, Ted Lowry, Bill Wilson, who was a good fighter, um, Keen Simmons, who was, I don't even know who the hell that was, uh, Harold Mitchell at the can, um, all right, all right, all right. Actually, and then then his first fight was in '51. Um, his first fights in '51 were against Cans. All right, he's probably, um, and this is what they would do. You know, they'd be waiting and trying to get a fight with one of those. You know, next the guys who were in the next year's top ten rankings. But while they're trying to get a fight with them, they would fight other fights. All right. So he's fighting other guys. Um, then he, oh, okay, here his. He fights seven times in 1951. All right, his uh, one, two, three, four. His fifth fight in 51 was against Rex Lane. All right, um, solid heavyweight, a solid heavyweight um, contender. You know, he was always in contendership, man. Uh, never got to become champion, but he was one of those guys that uh, just, you know, there was a couple other guys out there too good for him that he could not get past. But he was always a contender, top top 10. And when you were one of those top 10 uh, heavyweights, by the way, back then, 
you were one of the top ten baddest dudes on earth. All right, you got to figure there was like eight to um, maybe twenty times as more licensed boxers back then. So the pool of fighters was so much bigger. And to rise to the cream of the crop and to be in that top ten, you were a fucking badass. Okay, like don't ever get that twisted. Um, like, oh, he, he was never a champion, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, please, like, bring him into today and let's see what would happen, right? Um, like I said, I think he had, yeah, seven fights in 51. Um, 52 was first fights again, uh, against Barney Reynolds. Then Harry Matthews, 81 and 3. Um, I think his record is actually, uh, Oh, what am I talking about? I was going to say, I know he has a better record than that, but that's when uh, his record was at um, 81-3 and three when uh, Marciano fought him. I think he finished like 90-7, and seven, if I'm correct. All right, and beating Bernie Reynolds and then Harry Matthews puts Marciano, you know, because he's been beating, he beat La Starza, um, then he beat Rex Lane, then he beat... You know, Reynolds, Matthews, he's beating all these top 10 contenders. That gets him in line for a title shot against the world heavyweight champion, Jersey Joe Walcott. All right, you know, apparently uh, to, to Mayweather Sr., Walcott is, you know, um, what was the words he used? Um, did nothing. The, his name does not stand out in boxing. No one, you know, Jersey Joe Walcott's a bum, apparently, to senior. Because, um, you know, he, he'll say Joe Lewis, but he said, uh, you know, hold on, I, I haven't written down what the hell he said, you know. Yeah, he said, you won't find any name that ever, that ever stood out in boxing. And in case you don't know, Jersey Joe Walcott's one of the greatest fighters who ever lived. And I'm not talking, like, top 20, either. I'm talking, like, top 10, right? Um, you know, I wouldn't argue if someone had him in their top five. The dude is a, was a monster. Um, so he goes up, he finally gets his title shot. Jersey Joe Walcott in his last fight in 52. He knocks him out in the 13th round. Yeah, Walcott was a little past his prime because he's been, you know, he was battling uh, uh, Ezra Charles and um, you know, going through uh, some, some, some tough fights, but he was still Look, this dude is one of the, you know, I mean, arguably one of the top five fighters of all time. <clears throat> arguably one of the top ten greatest fighters of all time. I don't care if he's even a little past his prime. Um, and remind you, he, he was the world heavyweight champion um, at the time. Uh, <laughs> a fighter like that, even a little past their prime, is better than... You know, uh, outside, you know, uh, like every fighter on Floyd's resume in their prime, right? Like way better. I mean, it's it's crazy. It's crazy. So I mean, if he's calling, uh, if he's talking about bums and all that, I mean, I don't understand the need for them to downgrade other fighters in order to build up whatever they're doing at the time. And it seems to be a constant theme. Like, by the end of his career, he's going to have shitting on the family. And Roger Mayweather never seems to do that. That's why I always liked Roger. You know, he was always cool. Um, you know, he, he said some slick shit here and there, but it's usually to hype a fight and things like that. When he's being dead serious and there's no fight, um, coming up, you know, and he's not trying to hype a fight, and they have the camera on him talking to him. I mean, he's dead honest. You know, he's honest. He's serious. Um, he gives respect to all the greats, and maybe that's because he actually had a decent career. You know, um, I mean, he's the only one honest enough to just come out and say, "My nephew couldn't have hung in the '80s." You know, he just couldn't have done it. You know, he could not have hung with uh, the dudes in the 80s. Tommy Hearns would have blew him out of there. Things like that, you know. Um, senior, Mayweather, they would just shit all over Tommy. You know, they'd say, oh, yeah, you know, he, he 
ran out of gas and lost to Sugar Ray Leonard or something like that. You know, <laughs> crazy. They'd say something like that. Anyway, after after he takes the title from Walcott, he gives Walcott an immediate rematch. All right, he takes the title from the heavyweight champ, gives the ch the ex champion his rematch. He knocked him out in the first round. You know, um, yeah, bad shot too. Uh, then he gives La Starza his rematch. Um, which was a ballsy, he knocked him out in the 11th round. These are 15 round fights, by the way. And that was a ballsy thing to do. La Starza um, gave him, he did give him his toughest fight uh, uh, up until that time. You know, La Starza very easily could have came in there and just took that title right, right off of him. Um, you know, La Starza was neck and neck with Marciano in their last fight. And, you know, if, come on now, I mean, uh, that's the sign of a great champion. You know, he wasn't scared to fight this guy. This guy could have easily come in there and took everything he worked for. But he said, no, let's do it. You know, he could have fought a any of the other top few contenders, you know. But he fought La Starza again. One of the best fighters in the whole world, Okay. Like I said, he knocks him out in the uh, 11th, 11th round. And then who does he fight? Uh, another guy who, in my opinion, is... In my opinion, he is in my top 10 of all the greatest fighters who ever lived. Um, I wouldn't even mind if someone had him in their you know, top 5. Um, he's, a, he's an animal to me. Ezard Charles. As if you own Ezra Charles is one of the greatest fighters who ever lived. Um, six foot, seventy three inch reach, goes from middleweight, a six foot middleweight, not decent size middleweight there, seventy three inch reach, probably about an average size for a middleweight. Goes the whole way, goes to the light heavyweight, you know, beats everyone, beats uh, basically all of Murderer's Row, including Charlie Birdley. Um, at middleweight, by the way, you beat him at middleweight, not light heavyweight, where he would even fight sometimes. I mean, you know, he fought the toughest fighters out there. All right, Ezra Charles was a standout that does not get the credit he deserves. Um, Ezra Charles is really, you know, the one guy that Burley couldn't beat. Um, he lost to him twice. Uh, two of Ch Charlie's losses, um, he was robbed in New Orleans, first of all. And the other ones, like, I think, you know, uh, Oakland Billy Smith, they, he beat, uh, later to be, uh, Boardwalk Billy Smith when he went to Atlantic City and made a run out on the East Coast. Um, but Oakland Billy Smith was one of the toughest sons of bitches out there, and I think that's who the only fight film on Burley exists with is Oakland Billy Smith. Um, you know, you had Lloyd Marshall, uh, you know, Holman Williams, um, Holman and Burley. These are all murderers row guys. You know, Lloyd, uh, Oakland, um, you know, um, I guess at Burley. Uh, and they all traded uh, a couple, you know, like, Burley got the better of all of them. You know, that's why it's like Charlie Burley and the murderers row, you know, because he was... Um, always got the best of Holman Williams, even though Holman beat him, uh, I think, once. Um, Oakland Billy Smith, they traded. Uh, I think they each beat each other once. Uh, Lloyd Marshall, I don't know if Lloyd ever beat Burley. I don't think he did. Um, you know, but the murderers row, they were fighting guys a lot. You know, Tim Bradley always reminds me of a guy who, like, put back in time, he would have been in the murderer's row, you know. Um, interesting thing on Holman Williams, who I didn't know much, uh, I didn't know anything about until fairly recently, um, when I was talking to someone on here, and they pointed out the name, and I, I did some research, and then I was like, holy shit. Uh, Eddie Futch said, um, Holman Williams 
Holman Williams had no power. All right, first of all, Holman Williams didn't have any power. He did early in his career, but his hands, they, he destroyed his hands, um, you know, from f fighting tons and tons of fights. Um, destroyed his hands. Uh, most of the murderers row had problems with their hands, just so you know. Um, but Burley was the, the killer puncher out of the, the group. But Holman Williams eventually, like towards the, the middle of his career on, he had no punching power. Um, but if Eddie, Eddie Futch said if he did, he would have been better than Sugar Ray Robinson. Because he could box and do all everything. He could do everything, but he couldn't punch. Um, you know, that's just, that's just something about him, you know. Uh, you know, and Ezra Charles, you know, is an animal, man, an animal. Uh, you know, after La Starza, first fight at 54, he gives Ezra Charles his fight, his, his heavyweight uh, title fight, right? And um, <clears throat> Ezra Charles and Walcott battled. Um, Ezra used, was already heavyweight champion. Walcott took it from Ezra Charles. Um, and now Ezra Charles is getting, you know, a second chance. Um, he was 85 and 10 and 1 at, at, at the time when Marciano fought him. But I guess as Ezra, Ezra Charles never did anything that stood out in boxing to, to senior. You know, and he, he fights uh, Charles twice. You know, first fight uh, goes to a decision. Um, you know, 15 round decision. They have an immediate rematch. And uh, the rematch was fight of the year. Right? How many fight of the years has Floyd been in? How many rounds of the years has Floyd been in? You know, none. Um, you know, none. Uh, fight of the year. And I think he got knocked out in the eighth round. Let me check. Yeah. Eighth round KO. Yep. Eighth round KO. Um, Oh, yeah, yeah, it's talking about when um, Ezard split <laughs> Marciano's nose. You guys all see it the whole way down here. It was like a butterfly shrimp, you know, where you can just open it up. The fight was going to be stopped. And um, Rocky, you know, the, the, the ref came over to stop it. And he was going to, you know, give the championship to Ezard Charles. Uh, he would have been the... He would have been the first heavyweight ever to win um, the heavyweight championship uh, back. And unfortunately, Marciano talked the ref into giving him one more round. And he went out and gave it everything he had and knocked Ezard out. Um, Ezra Charles is one of the, you know, people sleep on him. Not only was he a hard puncher, he's one of the greatest defense fighters of all time, too. He had it all. You know, in terms of middleweight, he doesn't get enough credit. He don't. He does not get enough credit. Uh, maybe because his, you know, resume isn't as thick. He didn't stay there for so long and build up this giant legacy. Um, but like I said, you know, a prime Charlie Burley couldn't beat a green Ezra Charles at middleweight with two tries. Couldn't do it. Um... Ezard was a monster, man. He couldn't get fights, though. Couldn't c couldn't get, like, the big, big fights that he needed. He had to move up. Uh, you know, 6 foot, 73 inch reach. Starts at a middleweight. Can't get a fight. Keeps moving. Keeps a heavyweight champ of the world. Um, then he fights Don Cockle. Uh, stops him in the ninth round. And then the grand finale. All right, the grand finale. Um, you know, uh, <clears throat> but while he was, uh, you know, fighting, um, Don Cockle, Archie Moore was doing this huge press thing, uh, where he was even dressing up like a lady, which, uh, George Chavalo later used, you know, against Ali, but, um, Archie Moore dressed up like a woman and was, you know, to, he was doing it as a joke to shame um, Marciano into fighting. Uh, he was putting out posters, you know, wanted posters with Marciano's face on him, wanted dead or alive. Eventually, 
uh, you know, Archie Moore caved in, or I mean, uh, Marciano caved in and gave Archie Moore his shot. Um, you know, Archie Moore, again, must have, I mean, he, he must have never done anything that stands out in boxing. I mean, he's only, you know, one of the top five greatest fighters who ever lived. Also, I mean, the, the, he, you know, Art, Marciano fought a lot of cans. He did. And he fought a lot of past prime fighters. All of his greatest fights um, are against fighters that were past their primes, similar to Floyd Mayweather. Um, but the thing is, Archie or um, Rocky's opponents who were past their prime, you know, a little past their prime, unlike Joe, who was way past his prime, they weren't just your average fighter or, you know, your 60th. You know, an all-time great rank number 60 or something. These are guys who are arguably, all arguably, in the top 5, top 10. Um, so they're, if you think uh, the Oscar De La Hoya win was so special, or you think, you know, the Cotto win was so special, or you think the uh, Shane Mosley win was so special, or Pacquiao win was so special... If, if fucking every, all these guys are ten times as special. Those wins are ten times as special, man. It's crazy. You know, it's it's insane to me. Um, and he only after he beat or he beat Archie. All right, he fucking whacked Archie out of there in the ninth round, and he wasn't even gonna retire. But Archie or Rocky was getting fucking robbed. Uh, by his manager, and all he wanted to do was retire until that contract ran out. And he he, he already had his first fight. He was scheduled um, to have his first fight to come back. He was going to come back against uh, who'd Floyd Patterson, um, Johannesburg. What the fuck, fuck? Um, why am I forgetting his name? Johannesburg, what? I'm somehow I'm, I'm having a bad moment in my brain. He was scheduled to come back, um, and uh, someone stepped in. Custom Auto, Custom Auto actually stepped in and put an end um, to. <laughs> it sounds messed up, right? But he didn't do it on purpose. But he wanted that opponent for Floyd Patterson, and um, you know, once he didn't get. Uh, Yo, Johan? What? Why am I having? Why? Am, why can't I remember his name? Uh, I guess it's like some people forget more about boxing than others. No, it's not like you know. It's a very. I mean, God, um, uh, every, everyone fought him. I don't know. Anyway, um, he was gonna come back. He just wanted. He wasn't stopping at forty-nine and zero. You know, he was coming back. <laughs> I'm sorry. Name keeps messing with me. Uh, man, I'm really about to search it right now. And, uh, it don't even matter. Um, it's bothering the hell out of me. Uh, you ever get that? Um, he was going to come back. Man. Anyway, anyway, he was going to come back. He couldn't get that opponent. He waited around for a little bit longer, uh, searching for another fight, and his, he was in a plane crash. Um, he was making a comeback. Um, Lou Duva, who was, you know, his his main guy, uh, was, you know, is on record talking about it many, many times. Um, he actually even had, was in talks to get the fight together. Um, so there was a comeback. He was going to do it. He wanted to be the first fighter to win his championship, the heavyweight championship twice. Uh, I'm still thinking of that name because it's driving me crazy. It's right on the tip of my tongue, and I know I know it, but I, I can't remember it. Anyway, look, look. Whenever uh, Floyd Sr. or Floyd Jr. slander these fighters, right, um, and, like, Sr. says, um, and you got to realize, who's Floyd Mayweather's fans? Like, the, the, and I'm talking about his fans, like, you know, because he has fans of all ages, but I'm talking about, 
you know, when you have a 50-year-old dude, they're not a flomo. I mean, there are a couple, but I'm saying it's very rare to get a 50-year-old flomo. They're grown. Unless they have a childlike mind and they're just very immature, then it's a different story. But mostly they're younger, younger kids, young adults. Um, and they just started following boxing. Why the hell, or how the hell, would they even know the names on um, Marciano's record? So they're going to scroll through it. And be like, yeah, yeah, he, I mean, you know, Senior called every one of these guys a bum except Joe Lewis. So, I don't know any of them. It's not like I see Muhammad Ali or George Foreman on this because those are like the only fucking heavyweight names they know. Uh, you know, so they're all bums apparently, right? Look, it's 70 years ago. 70 70 years, 70 years from now, when, you know, someone says uh, Floyd Mayweather fought nothing but bums except Manny Pacquiao or something like that, you know, um, who, who is going to know more than 80% of the fighter? I mean, or, or like, who's going to know <clears throat> more than 20% of the fighters on Floyd's resume? And I'm talking about, like, a, a new boxing fan. Maybe been following it for five, ten years. Very few of them. Very few of them. 70 years ago. Dude, they probably won't even remember who, like, they probably won't even remember who Miguel Cotto is. And you think that's funny, huh? But do, do think of how many Floyd fans, all right, know Wilfredo Gomez. How about Benitez? You know what I'm saying? And that ain't no 70 years ago. Now think 70 years down the road. You really think Cotto's going to be that memorable to someone who, you know, been in the watching boxing 5, 10 years or something like that? No. No, unfortunately not. Um, what about, like, uh, D Dick Tiger, right? And he started right when uh, Marciano was, like, retiring. Um, he went up until the 70s. No, I don't, I'll be damned if there's one Flomo out there who knows a thing about Dick Tiger. Um, you know, he's one of the greatest middleweights who ever lived. Maybe the you know, third greatest middleweight who ever lived. Fourth, something like that. I mean, you know, one of the greatest fighters. Uh, shit, Sam Langford. Do they even know who Sam Langford is? Does fucking Mayweather himself even know who Sam Langford is? I mean, really, really you know what I'm saying? Um, now, I know that was more than 70 years, but, you know, still, my point, he's arguably number one uh, on the all-time great list, you know. Uh, Benny Leonard, again, more than 70 years, but still, you know, probably the greatest lightweight who ever lived. But they don't know who he is. They think Floyd Mayweather's the best lightweight who ever lived. You know what I mean? It's insane. It's insane, man. Um, Bob Foster, that's a, a recent one, a little more recent one, big name. Um, consider, you know, he was the shit in, you know, the 70s. Um, you know, Ali fought him. Um, no one, he was a light heavyweight who moved up, you know, but he was one of the greatest light heavyweights who ever lived. Had, a, um, a Tommy Hearns-like right hand, uh, in the light heavyweight division. How about this one? How about this one? How many, uh, of these, you know, People who live and die by what Floyd said, even though who Azuma Nelson is. And that dude just retired like six years ago or something. I mean, I know he was big in the 80s and 90s and you know, early 2000s or whatever, but, you know, he did fight on. And they don't know a fucking thing about Azuma Nelson. They probably never even heard the name. You know what I mean? So think 70 years from now. Are they going to know any Mayweather opponents? They might know a couple. Right? A couple. Just like people, you know, nowadays you scheme through it and you realize, you know, um, hell, even me, I can't know every fucking um, opponent Marciano fought. I don't have footage on some of them. I mean, uh, but we don't, that doesn't mean that they weren't damn good fighters. Uh, they Remember, these guys all didn't have 
special management and training teams and promoters to guide their careers. No, they were just the toughest dude in their fucking neighborhood who tried to earn a living fighting. And maybe they, and they, not maybe, they took a lot of fights on short notice. And I'm talking a day, two days. Um, you know, they did, they had to work a 50, 60, 70 hour work week and train and fight. You know, it's a big difference, man. Big difference. Um, so just because some dude has a, uh, uh, 22, and this is just a wild number, a 22 and 13 record does not mean he was a fucking bum, all right, um, if, if he could have been, you know, um, grew, like, groomed in this generation through, like, the top rank, uh, prospect grooming and, you know, development, uh, team, you know, that same guy might have been one of the greatest of whatever division he fought in, you know, but they didn't have it easy, they didn't have every avenue, um, paved with gold for them. You know, so just because you see a guy, don't let a fucking record fool you, man. Don't let a record fool you. Like, look, right here. Um, Archie Moore, when he fought, uh, when he fought Marciano, his record was 148, 19, and 8. All right, so good, but he lost 19 times. He lost 19 times. Well, do you realize that when he had to travel, like, he would literally um, have to fight a white guy? And no matter how bad he beat the shit out of the dude, the white guy won. You know, and that happened for a lot of his losses. Uh, you know, and this is him aging, and that's still his record. Uh, I mean, you know, come on, man. Uh, you know, don't don't let these O's confuse you, man. You know, like uh, Ezra Charles, the, the the first time he fought Marciano, his record was eighty-five and ten. Uh, he was uh, aging, but, you know, one of the greatest fighters to ever live. Way better, way better than Floyd Mayweather could ever, ever be. Um, and he had every road paved with gold. Ezard had not one road paved with, ro with gold. Most of his roads had fucking... Uh, the, the, it was a bridge that was knocked down. He had to throw a fucking a Batman dart arrow gun across it and swing and shit to get to the other side. You know, it, it's nothing like nowadays, man. You know, I'm, he would get robbed, too. All these guys had to, you know, force to take dives under threat. Um, you know, terrible decisions, just highway robbery. You think the shit that happens nowadays is bad? Look at the stuff they do on national TV nowadays. Imagine what they did back then uh, when there was no TV involved. Hey, <laughs> all there was was some newspaper man that they could slip a five dollar bill, and he'd say the decision was just. Okay, um, you know, please, like, I just don't like seeing Pete, these all time greats slandered to 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 build up a terrible fight. Like, hey, say, f fuck it, you know? Yeah, th this fight is a terrible fight, but, you know, Floyd's aging, or just be honest, I don't know, and he also says something about, we know there's a whole new group of guys out there, um, and he goes, you know who they are, he's talking about, like, the Sean, Sean uh, Porters, Keith Thurmans, and Kell Brooks, and all them, but then he, he, like, completely jumps over it, and doesn't say why he's not fighting one of them guys, even though everyone in the welterweight division put their fucking career on hold, hoping that they would get picked, uh, you know, in, like, the whole top 10, top 15, and then he picks, like, top 30 guy, uh, which really was a smack in the face to every one of them. Uh, anyway, man, I'm, I'm going too long here. I'm going to end it. Let me know what y'all think about, you know, this shit. It, it, the video is called, uh, I don't know. All right, let me tell you what the video is called in case you want to watch it. Mayweather Mayweather Sr. reveals why Berto's a, a good pick or something like that. Mayweather reveals why Berto's something. That's all I can see. Alright, let me know what y'all think, man. Thunderdome Boxing Talk. Peace.